internet land welcome back to another video welcome back to our shop so uh here we are guys at the uh office the studio for alamo city spray now some of this is done on the computer some of it's on a laptop some of it's on a cell phone whatever now today i'm actually one of our other uh our other businesses sitting here at the retail space working on my laptop uh, creating some cool stuff. So I wanted to come to you guys today to give you a chance to see part of my workflow, uh, what it takes to create some of these designs. Um, when I first started this uh, process, I know that I searched high and low. I searched for videos on uh, on how to do this, on tutorials to teach me. And let me tell you, I just didn't really find what I was looking for. It took a lot of videos, a lot of different people showing me different parts of the sequence in order to put together a cohesive plan for myself. So if you guys just sit back, I'm going to do this live. It's real time. Uh, try to get together as fast as possible. We'll do one design this time, and I'll come back to you periodically and show you multiple designs. Now, these are multi-layer colored stencils, and there's multiple ways that I go about doing this. Um, but for today, this is the way it's going to be. So all of the links to the programs that I use, I will use down below. They're all free. I don't pay for any of this stuff. This is just uh, software that you can either download on your phone or your computer to make any of this work. So, um, all right, guys, sit back. I'm going to flip the camera around and let you see my uh, screen and what we're working with here. So for this, okay, let me see. All right, guys, now I'm just working on uh, the old laptop here. Now, this is a wallpaper design that I found on Google that I really liked. It's one of the HD wallpapers, and I would like to recreate this image with spray paint. So, in order to do that, I need to convert this image into a usable format for myself. So let me just show you how we're going to do that. I'll just zoom in on the screen and I'll try to work around this tripod and see if you guys can see it all. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen this image before if you are if you followed the movie The Batman. And that's all I did, guys, was a uh, quick Google search just to find the image and then saved it to my computer. After that, I'm going to open up my internet browser, okay, on a brand new screen. Now, I'm... I'm going to go to a website called, now this is one of many ways of doing this, but this is P-N-G-T-O-S-V-G.com. P-N-G to S-V-G. What we're doing, guys, is we need to convert that image, okay, into, into a scalable vector graphic so that we can turn it into a cut file uh, and have our cut machine take care of that. Now, as you see, this website, that's what it is designed to do, is to convert PNGs or JPEGs into an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. And uh, you can play along with this website. It's real simple. It's a plug-and-play type thing. I'm going to come right down here to the choose a file, drag and drop. I'm going to choose my file. Let's see. Uh, I believe that's it right there. Double click. We scroll on down. I'm going to get rid of this ad that's in the corner. Scroll down, yes, that's the image that I want to convert. Now, it automatically tells me that it's going to give me five. I understand that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Generate and see what that gives me. I like to let the computer do its thing on its, all, uh, its default settings first so that I can kind of see what we're going to get. And really what I'm looking for, folks, and as you see, this is the graphic that's generated. It's very similar. You get, you do get a good color gradation breakdown now i'm going to try to zoom in and see if you can see this a little bit better let me see okay as you look at this image it's pretty good it's not too bad there are a few parts of it that might be a little grainier than i like so what i would like to do and that's going to be over in this area you've got a bunch of tiny little spots and that might be really hard for me or for my cut machine to cut. So what I'd like to do, let me back that back out just a hair. Okay, what I'm gonna do is come back up to, let's see, there we are, let me lock you down so you can see me. I'm gonna come right back up here to my simplify, and I wanna give it, I'm gonna click two, 
plus two on simplification. And really what that's going to do, and click generate again, it's going to take all these small little tiny shapes and make them a little bit more rounded, a little less jagged, and a little bit more user friendly when it comes to my cut machine. Now this is only working with a palette of five colors. So that's not too bad. It looks pretty good to me. Before I go further and download anything, I want to come over here to my colors. Let's just add and see six or seven, see how many we could get. Okay, now I see the color it gave me, and that color is just a darker blue. Since I know that, let's go ahead and try it again. Okay, now we're getting some greens. We're getting colors that we don't even really see. Uh, because of that, I want to go ahead and back it back up to five. You don't want to do too many layers. It gets a little muddy when you do that, so I try to simplify it as much as possible. As a matter of fact, now let's go back to four layers uh, and see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and keep the positive two simplification just because we do want to keep those shapes rounded and grouped. Now, like I say, I'm taking my time on this, showing you guys the steps. Uh, I could have done this in the first step. Now, that actually looks pretty awesome as well with four colors, but I do feel that I lose some of the uh, detail here that I want to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and come up to five again, and we'll go to generate one more time, put it back to the setting we had. Let's see what we come out to. That means we're going to be working with five layers in this. There you go. That's much better. I, I like that a lot better. So I'm going to come down here to download the SVG. We're going to download the SVG. Okay. Now we're going to... That's what I use. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this and show you what I'm working with. And this is real time. So you guys kind of see, I'm just working right here on our retail counter at our shop. <laughs> I've got it hooked up to a Cricut machine. All you guys probably have one of these at your house. If you're any kind of crafter or maker of any sorts, you probably got one or know somebody that does. Uh, and when we come to the cut process, I'll show you exactly how that works. But uh, yeah, so I'm just hooked up to my laptop here and recording for you guys. So now let's let's work through the workflow here. All right, we're going to open up our Cricut program. I have several windows open because I always work on multiple projects. Now, having a, oh, an open canvas, a clean open canvas, go to Upload, okay? We're going to click on Upload Image. Now, Browse. Now, there is the image that we just created, the SVG. Go ahead and upload the SVG into you the image yes that is the image that i'm looking for it is image, which is what it says it is so i will upload at this point sometimes it takes a little longer than others <coughs> okay it has now appeared it has now appeared on my screen right here so i'm going to highlight that go click on add to canvas now, this is where some of the trickiness gets, guys. I'm going to go ahead and kind of zoom in on the screen a little bit more. And I will be doing some screencasts and screen shares so that you guys can see up close and personal a little bit uh, better on the detail on how I work this. Because I know this is kind of hard for you to see. But I'm going to, I'm working with you guys. I'm trying. All right. I figure nobody else is even putting this video out. So I might as well do my best I can for you. Okay. Here we are. Uh, so... First thing I want to do is figure out the canvas size. Now, I know generally I want to do something uh, like this. I would be working on a 16 by 20 canvas or maybe a 12 by 16. Now, because of the dimensions of my cup machine, okay, the mat is 12 inches wide. 11 and a half inches is the maximum cut width. 13, excuse me, uh, the mat is 13 inches wide and 11 and a half inches is the maximum cut width. So, I want to go ahead and highlight my image. Okay, and I'm going to come right up here to size, and on the height right here, the maximum is going to be 11 and a half inches, because that's going to give us a perfect frame for what we're looking for. Well, that gives us a width of 15.315. That tells me that this image is going to work absolutely perfect for a 16, or excuse me, for a 12 by 16 uh, canvas. So what I'm going to do is uh zoom out just a little here so you can see okay we are now at 11 and a half inches by 15 and 
0.3. So I'm going to scoot this image over just a hair, okay? And just to the left of it, because remember, we can't go taller, so we have to go longer. So I'm going to come right over here to Shapes. Open Shapes. Click on a square. I and mean, you can choose any shape. I just like a square. I'll drag that shape down to about a half inch, and it tells you there, there's, you've got little guides that tell you how big it is. And I'm going to put it right up here in the corner, and then I'm going to duplicate that square, okay? Place that square closer to this side of the image. Now, now that I have that, I'm going to take my image, scoot it a little closer to my squares, all right? Over on my right-hand bar, I'm going to highlight both of my squares, attach them so now that they're an attached unit now i'm going to look over here guys on my vector graphic svg that we uploaded it tells me there's five layers in here let's look at it and see what we've got one two three four and five now because we've got five layers i want to go ahead and make five sets of squares these are going to be your registration marks so now that we've got the squares highlighted i'm going to duplicate two three four Five. So now we have five sets of those. I'm going to move my image out of the way, come in, highlight all of my squares, come right here to align. We are going to align left, then we're going to align top. That puts them all stacked up exactly on top of each other. I'll move my image back just to the side of those squares. And like I say, guys, this is for registration purposes. Okay, so now... What I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my uh, SVG. Now, it's grouped. Everything is grouped together, so we have to ungroup that. Okay, now we have individual layers that we can work with. We'll come to our first attachment of squares. We'll highlight it. Highlight one of our uh, layers, and then click Weld. Sometimes it takes a moment to fuse that together, as you saw the change on the screen. Now, I'll come back over here and highlight my next layer of attachments. Highlight my uh, graphic and weld that layer as well. Okay, now it's converted over. It's made a welded layer. Okay, once again, I'll come back to another set of my squares. Highlight my next layer and weld. Each time I do that, notice the color changes on the squares. It's because it's changing to the color of that particular layer. Remember, when we made this uh, scalable vector graphic, it separated it by layers. They separated your layers by color. So, now there I held, it, they want to know my sticky keys. No, I don't want to turn on sticky keys, but I do want to weld that layer. So, uh, we're down to our last layer. Okay, if you look, well, let's go ahead and just do this. We'll highlight our attached squares, come down to our bottom image layer, highlight that, and click weld. Now, what we've got, guys is if we scroll through here, you'll see all of our layers are now weld result. Okay, they say weld result. That means that all of our layers are welded to something. Okay, also notice that we have a little caution symbol or a warning sign. We're going to click on that. It tells me, oh, my image size is too large. We have to reduce it to 11 and a half by 23 and a half or less. Well, sometimes when you go to add and stuff, it, you know, we added these squares in here and sometimes that may make it to where it, uh, makes the image a little bit different. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to select all, okay, select all our layers at once, and we're going to make a group of them. Now they're all stuck together. We can move them in accordance. We're going to come back to our sizing at the top. Go back to your 11 and a half. It'll snap you back to 16. There you go. So we're dealing with a width of 16.027 inches and a height of 11.5. Remember, our cut mat is 11 and a half inches uh, cut width. So that's why we wanted to do that. Um, now, going through these layers, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do before I decide if I want to cut all of the layers, because sometimes you don't need to, I'm going to go to the group and I'm going to make them all hidden. I'm going to click that eyeball and make them all disappear. And one by one, we're going to take a look at these layers. Let's click on the first layer. Now, as you see, it's got a whole lot of chopped up stuff in here, but for the majority, it's one color. It's like a dark cranberry red or a black even, okay? I'm going to say that if we sprayed the entire canvas with that color, that's our base color. So I'm going to leave that hidden, okay? Hide it again. Now let's go to the next layer and open it up. 
There's our red. Now that looks good. We've got solid chunks of red that are going to be easy to cut. Yes, you've got a few little spots here and there. And we could go further and clean that up. And I will take that in an advanced uh, lesson on how to do that. But for now, this is good enough. Okay, so we'll hide that layer. Go down to the next layer. This is a blue layer. Once again, this layer looks really clean. We're going to keep it. You've got your registration marks. and You've got some nice clean lines here. Um, let's hide that one and go to the next layer. Ah, a black layer. Now, this is an interesting layer because you have a lot of fine stuff in here. When we go to cut this layer, we may have some fallout on some of these smaller items. And you'll see how that's going to turn out. We'll find out. It may or may not turn out perfectly. And that's part of uh, the changing of the art. You know, yes, we started with an image that was a known image. You know, someone else created that image. We are completely digitally turning that image into something else and then turning our art form again into a whole other form by uh, converting it even further into a spray paint art painting. Now, as we look at this uh, final layer, you see you've got a lot of holes there. Let me zoom in a little if I can. Okay, as you see right in here, basically you've got solid items here that are the solid line all the way around and it makes kind of circles that are just going to fall out now i know that's what's going to happen so that's okay what that tells me is either i can not use this layer because the major spots are not that important or i could go ahead and use it and these big areas they'll end up being one of the base layers like i'll go to my black layer first and then it'll probably be this layer to give a red and then you'll lay probably this other black layer on top of it. We're not real sure. We'll figure that out. Sometimes that's part of the learning process on making this. But for now, uh, it looks like all of our layers are going to be okay. So I'm going to come back to our group. I'm going to open everything back up so that none of it's hidden anymore. Okay. All right. There's everything. I am going to go ahead and isolate this one black layer. Because getting rid of that one layer, I'm still left with the majority of an image. Seeing that lets me know that really all I need to do is have a background color. I don't actually need a cut layer for that. So there's this, let me make you smaller so you can see. But yeah, that looks really good. You can see how that's gonna turn out. Now, okay. Now that being said, what we will do is go to, you know what, we're gonna save the project because we do wanna save it. And we're gonna just call it the Batman. Save. Okay, and it's always important to save that stuff. I don't want to get lost on the project. Now, uh, darling, can I have you... Never mind, actually. There's going to be a live thing. They're going to see it all. So that's cool. You guys are going to see the whole process. Some of this is... It wasn't. So, here we are. We're going to come right up here in the corner. We're going to click make it. That's all there is to it. It's sorting the projects into map by color right now. Now... Remember, because we have registration marks, okay, at least one of your images larger than 11 and a half in height or width. Well, yes, that's right, because we used large mat. We're on a 24-inch mat, so we're going to click OK. That's not a problem. It's still going to cut it for us. And we're going to look at this layer. Man, that looks cool. And we have our registration marks down there, so it's the orientation is a little upside down from where I normally would see it, but it's OK. Um, at this point, we're going to look at our colors, right, kind of take note of them. That's kind of a cranberry layer. We've got an apple red layer, a brilliant blue layer, a black layer. And that's really it. Uh, one, two, three, four layers we're looking to cut. So now I'm going to turn around, guys, and I'm going to show you how this works. Let me kind of, you can come with me. Let me put you on normal view. Okay, you're on normal view here. And... Here, I guess I'll just let it run just like this. Yeah. Here's your Cricut mat, guys. And uh, we use the 24-inch uh, mat just because I can do longer images on it, or longer stencils. Has a uh, protective plastic sheeting on there to keep anything can get stuck to it. Oh, thank you so much for the coffee, darling. You know I needed that. Hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, a good cup of coffee makes the world go round and a good woman to make for you hey that's a lifesaver <laughs> that's another thing you guys are watching live look i'm an old school cat i'll tell you right now i do believe that uh we all have our roles and places in life and 
my lady's rolling places right beside me. It ain't behind me and it ain't in front of me or in any other way. It's going to be right beside me. And you know what? Sometimes doing the things like this to help her guy do these live videos, uh, I appreciate you taking a back seat and letting me do that without feeling any kind of way about any kind of normal uh, political correctness and roles. Thank you for being the help in this, by the way. So, now I'm going to set this coffee down. God, it's delicious too, by the way. Good old Folgers Black, in case anybody's wondering. Now, here we are, guys. Poster board. This is just regular art skills poster board, heavyweight board from Walmart. I don't buy anything special. Uh, I do cut them in half, and it's not actually in half. They're 28 inches wide, so if you cut them in half, you're with a 14 inch. So I cut them down to 13 inches, so they fit from edge to edge on my uh, on my uh, Cricut mat. Now, I personally, I don't come down to my one-inch line. I take it all the way to the top because uh, I like to have a little bit of rim and a little something extra to grip onto. And we're going to be reusing these quite a bit. So we want to make sure that they've got some extra play. At that point, all you do, guys, is feed it in, load it into your machine. Now, we're ready over here. Let me see what you're looking at. Let me see. All I'm going to do, guys, is come over here and click the go button, and you're going to watch how this happens. Uh, it says continue. Okay, we click continue. We wait for the machine to catch up and say, hey, I recognize your machine. Let's see if it recognizes the machine. Sometimes, and sometimes I have this problem where it doesn't want to recognize the machine. So... Uh, what I do at that point, well, it did recognize the machine. See, even plugged in directly, sometimes, guys, gets to be a... All right, no, it didn't recognize anything. Ah, here's an issue I have with burning these things out. Sometimes it doesn't recognize the paper, and you got to play with the setting a little bit. Turn it back. Okay, now it says I'm cutting on poster board, which I am. So I'm going to load my mat again, because it kicked it out just a second ago. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, my button's going, I can push go. And I'm pushing go. Uh, and it's cutting. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. First, I'll take you over to the uh, computer. And show you there, it's showing on this red layer. We are 6% cut. We're gonna turn right over here and look at the machine itself and see how that works. Yeah, I know this is not the most entertaining portion of it, guys. Uh, can I get you to play audio? Yeah. So uh, we'll put on a little bit of music in the background, maybe. <laughs> now, I tell you what, while this is cutting, would you like to watch another image? I mean, we're doing this live. I plan on doing a few of these today. I mean, I don't work one at a time. So uh, this is all that it looks like for this machine. So I tell you what, let's watch this process again. Mm. And I will also be putting this on uh, multiple multiple platforms, multiple stencils, so that you can watch how this process is done step by step, you know, with different images. So that you're not thinking, oh, it's only because he's picking these certain ones. No, I'll show you how to choose an image. And that's the thing, is learning how to do this. It took me a while to figure out what images are better to use, which ones the computer recognizes better, which ones the uh, cut and software work with better. Because it's not every image, and you do have to play with them a little bit. There is a learning curve. Um, a lot of times I'll do a layer, 
and it does nothing but uh, it does nothing but fall apart when you pull it out of the thing. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to click on that. We're going to watch for a little while. Now, as you can see, guys, some of these uh, some of these pieces do take quite a while to cut, and uh, it could take a long time. So we're not going to stay here for the entire thing. Okay, we will stay for this layer. I'll let you see what it looks like to change layers for the screen. There you go. You look over here at the top it shows you the colors now this one here this is the first layer it's a dark red and i usually write that on the layer as well see this next one it looks like it's an apple red and we've got an oasis blue and a black okay now we're a hundred percent done with the cutting of this layer so i'm going to turn it around and show you what that looks like when it gets done okay now, this machine's just finishing its job right now. And it'll spit it out. There it comes. There we go. Okay, so now I'll show you the process of opening this up so you kind of see what it looks like to do that. All right. Now, I'm going to come up a close-up on this. Can you see the cuts? Oh yeah, all these lines, really nice cuts. You can't see them perfectly on camera, but they're all cut. So watch the process of, uh, of revealing here. I turn it upside down. It's always easier for me, especially with a new mat. These things are so sticky, they can tear the poster board if you're not careful. And it's easier to work some of the small parts away. If we were dealing with the vinyl that a lot of people are dealing with when they're doing uh, cricket type projects, it'd be a little different. But we're not. Okay. Now, how did that go? Ah, well, here we are, folks. We did have an issue. Uh, and I'm going to say the this issue is due to the uh, pressure setting that we had uh, issue a while ago. So I'm going to have to load it again and try to cut that layer again. And there it is, folks. Sometimes they don't work out perfect. So for that, and because of that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. I'll keep rolling video footage, and we will pick this up on another live footage, and I'll edit it down for you later on, too. So just know, guys, we're going to get this Batman piece done. OK, 